Good morning, friends. How are you doing? So glad you've joined us on this Sunday morning. Uh, as you can see that we are in a different location right now. Um, man, my life has just been crazy over the last week. I don't know about yours. Um, as some of you know, uh, Miranda was in the hospital this week, and so my life is just flipped upside down and caring for her and the family and everything else. Um, but what a great opportunity we have to celebrate God's goodness and His faithfulness, even when things may not be going as we had planned. Um, and, and so this morning we are uh, recording in the office, and uh, so you get to see some of the cool books behind me, and we get to celebrate here. Uh, this morning we're going to just take some time to hear God's Word, uh, the passages of Scripture for us for today, um, and then think upon the, the Gospel lesson as well, and spend some time in prayer. Um, and we'll make a, a list. There's a list for you if you would like some songs to listen to as well. Um, but may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Um, again, this is I'm Pastor Nate from Bethel Nazarene Church. Uh, we are developing spirit-led Christ-like disciples uh, in the church and in the community. Uh, and so may you continue along in that journey uh, today. Um, and may we keep our eyes on Jesus. That he is the way maker, the one who uh, gives us strength and uh, the one who guides us in all circumstances, whether you're in the mountain or the valley or whether you're just uh, kind of status quo right now. Um, but God's presence is with you. And so let's reflect upon that this morning um, as we celebrate him and hear his word that we would be uh, his disciples. So as we start this time, hear the word uh, from Psalm 138. I give thanks to you with all my heart, Lord. I sing your praise before all other gods. I bow toward your holy temple and thank your holy name for your loyal love and faithfulness because you have your name and word greater than everything else. On the day I cried out, you answered me. You encouraged me with inner strength. Let all the earth's rulers give thanks to you, Lord, when they hear what you say. Let them sing about the Lord's ways, because the Lord's glory is so great. Even though the Lord is high, he can still see the lowly. But God keeps his distance from the arrogant. Whenever I am in deep trouble, you make me live again. You send me your power against my enemies, against their wrath. You save me with your strong hand. The Lord will do all this for my sake. Your faithful love lasts forever, Lord. Don't let go of what your hands have made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that your presence is with us wherever we may be in whatever circumstances we face today. Father, in these moments, may the distractions of life be set aside. May the gift of your Holy Spirit speak into our hearts and our minds today. Remind us that we are loved and that you are with us. So cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Isaiah 6, the Old Testament lesson for today. Isaiah 6, uh, verses 1 to 13. Hear the word of the Lord. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne. The edges of his robe filled the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had wings, six wings. With two, they veiled their faces. With two, their feet. And with two, they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. Door frames shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, Mourn for me. I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I've seen the king. The Lord of heavenly forces. Though then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing coal. 
that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed, and your sin is removed. Then I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom should I send, and who will go for us? I said, I am here. Send me. God said, Go and say to this people, Listen intently, but don't understand. Look carefully, but don't comprehend. Make the minds of this people dull. Make their ears deaf and their eyes blind, so that they can't see with their eyes, or hear with their ears, or understand with their minds, and turn and be healed. I said, How long, O Lord? And God said, Until cities lie ruined with no one living in them, until there are houses without people, and the land is left devastated. The Lord will send the people far away, and the land will be completely abandoned. Even if one-tenth remain there, they will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, which when it is cut down, leaves a stump. Its stump is a holy seed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel lesson for today. The gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. The gospel according to Luke, uh, chapter 5, view in verse 1. Let's hear the word of the Lord for us today. The gospel lesson. One day, Jesus was standing beside Lake Gerasa when the crowd pressed around him to hear God's word. Jesus saw two boats sitting by the lake. The fishermen had gone ashore and were washing their nets. Jesus boarded one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, then asked him to row out a little further from the shore. Jesus sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. When he finished speaking to the crowds, he said to Simon, row out farther into the deep water and drop your net for a catch. Simon replied, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. Because you say so, I'll drop the nets. So they dropped the nets, and their catch was so huge that their nets were splitting. They signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They filled both boats to full, so that they were about to sink. When Simon Peter saw the catch, they, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Leave me, Lord, for I am a sinner. Peter and those with him were overcome with amazement because of the number of fish they caught. James and John, Zebedee's son, sons, were Simon's partners, and they were amazed too. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. As soon as they brought the boats to shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that no matter where we are or what's going on in life, whether we're running the crazy life around and we're just going from here to there, that you are with us. Father, whether we're still in spending time just reflecting, Lord, that you are there. Father, even in these moments, that you are there. You are with us. We thank you for your presence that we don't need to do anything special to say, oh, be with us. You don't have to sing the right song, say the right words, but you inhabit the praises of your people, that you gather where your people are, even when it's just one of us, that you meet us right where we are. So thank you for meeting us right where we are. In the midst of all life's circumstances, in the midst of the snowstorms, and in the midst of the cold weather, in the midst of a, a, a chaotic life, in the midst of spending time in the hospital, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of all, God, that you draw near. May we today recognize and know that you are there. 
Lord, I thank you for being with us this week. But Lord, we also thank you for these opportunities that we can hear your word, spend time, some time together, uh, even in these uh, in these ways, um, not being physically together, but, but Lord, that in these moments that you have, we can use them to speak into our hearts and our minds. So Father, the distractions of life, which there are many, may they be set aside. We thank you for your word, its faithfulness, your faithfulness in the midst of it. Oh, gracious Lord, we lift to you those who are suffering. Father, maybe it's physically, emotionally, or maybe it's something spiritually that they're suffering with. Oh God, in your grace and comfort, draw near. Father, we just pray that you would hear our prayers, the silence, the groans, the moans. And Lord, that you would answer them according to your will. But then in the midst of all of it, may we remember that you are a compassionate God, a loving God. In your infinite mercy, hear our prayers this morning. to you be glory forever and ever and we pray as your son has taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, what did you hear in the gospel lesson this morning? It's a very familiar passage. It's recorded in all of the gospels as far as uh, Jesus calling the disciples to himself. And he calls us daily to follow him, doesn't he? And that we, as his disciples, as followers of Jesus, um, he calls us to some pretty important things. You know, one of the things I, I, I pulled from this passage, uh, not pulled, but that I hear in it, and Luke uses this phrase over and over, and uh, one day, I think it's a reminder that one day, things happen. It may not be every day, but there was this particular day that this took place, um, and then we need to listen to it. I, I wonder this day, on this day, one day, uh, what the Lord is speaking to your heart and mind about. At the beginning of this passage, you hear all the people kind of pressing in on Jesus, wanting to get a glimpse of him, wanting to be close to him, wanting to, to hear what he has to say. Maybe even for some of them, uh, to touch him so he, they can be healed or have Jesus touch them so that they can be healed. Uh, whatever the case may be, there's this crowd that has gathered around and it's almost like forcing Jesus to get further and further away. Uh, and in the last passage that we heard last week, uh, we, we saw these uh, the people of Nazareth, right? Pressing in on Jesus, trying to get him and get him to the outskirts of the town and ready to stone him and throw him off a cliff because they didn't like what he had to say. And the message sometimes we don't like. And these people are pressing in on Jesus. And they're on the shore. And Jesus finally notices that the fishermen are, are off washing their nets. After an evening of not catching anything, they were washing their nets. Um, and mending them and taking care of them. Their possessions, right? And, and the disciples, hold, or the fishermen uh, at this point in time, are holding on to these things and taking care of them because it's our livelihood. It's how they make their money, how they survive. It's how the business was done. I wonder sometimes, friends, do we go looking for Jesus' presence? Do we try to get in on that? 
Or do we just kind of watch from the outskirts and go, okay, well, maybe his presence is there. Maybe he's with me. Maybe he's, I, I, I don't know. And we just prayed. And in the prayer, you probably heard over and over again, it's this journey that I'm on. It, it's trying to recognize where God is at work, recognizing God's presence in my life, recognizing God's presence in the world, not just internally, not just with me, Nate, but but in the world as well, because we believe that God is active in all of the world, and not just in corners or pockets or individual lives. But God is moving in ways that we would never imagine or even see. And Luke points that out throughout his gospel, that Jesus and God work through the poor, the outcasts, those that we never think that God would work in and through. Uh, so maybe we need to be open to that. And so here in this location, in this situation, uh, the, the people are pressing in on Jesus and he's teaching them. It gets so bad that he gets into the boat and asks the fisherman to push him out a little way so he can project into that moment and be away, right? Um, they want to hear what Jesus had to say. Now, the, the, the passage doesn't say exactly what Jesus was talking about, but it was all about this interaction with Jesus and the fishermen. I think we need to play that part of the fisherman right now. And we're the fishermen. What if Jesus came to us and said, hey, will you push out a little bit further? Will you go out a little bit further? Would you listen to him? What if Jesus says, hey, I know you're done cleaning your nets. I know you're doing all that or you're doing it right now, but why don't you take the boat and go out a little bit further and drop your nets? We often take these words and we often think, well, the fishermen know where they're supposed to be. They know when the right time to catch. And, and Jesus is just a teacher. Just, right? And, and in that moment that we often kind of portray this as like, well, yeah, Jesus knows. He's the son of God. But this, this fishermen know as well. Friends, I wonder, what are you holding on to? I don't have anything in my hands right now. Uh, but what are you holding on to in life? Maybe it's part of your identity. Maybe it's part of your personality that God is trying to shape and mold and trying to create that new creation, right? Well, we are that new creation. Like the old is gone, new has come. But sometimes you hold on to those things in the past. And sometimes as disciples, uh, we have followed Jesus and we said yes to Jesus. And we're following Jesus and yet, there are still things in our lives that Jesus is asking us to, to drop. To let go of. Because it's comfortable. It's what we know. If we let go, what will happen? What types of things will take place? The disciples over and over again had to, in this passage had to let go of things. They had to let go that it's in the middle of the day and they had to go fishing and drop their nets where there probably weren't any fish. They had to let go of their knowledge and understanding of fishing just in that moment just to follow Jesus. They had to listen to what he had to say. Now, they could have said, no, we're not going to. And in that moment when they let go, what takes place? Well, they can't get the net back in. They're dragging it to shore. They start splitting and tearing. So many fish in it. And Peter's words leave me, Lord, for I'm a sinner. So often I think we hear those words or we say, yeah, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But friends, we need to continue to give of our lives to the one who has given his life for us. So what are you holding on to? Is there something in your life that you're just kind of holding on to and you know you need to let go of it, but you're too afraid to let go of it because maybe life will be better. Maybe life will be harder. Maybe you're trying to intellectualize all of this. But I wonder if we realize that God's presence is with us just as it's here in this passage, as we've read in, 
in Isaiah and, and God wanting to, to cleanse us and renew us. And, and even in the Psalm passage, that, that God's presence is always with us. He knows what's right and best. We hold on to things. We hold on to those things that we identify with. You can see behind me, there's there's a medal, and then there's another one right there as well um, uh, for some of the cycling I did this year. And sometimes I can hold on to that bike. Like, hold on and I'll let it go. That's, a, that's all I want to do. But that bike's just a tool. It's just exercise. It's, it's not my livelihood. Could I let it become my livelihood? You see, the nets that the disciples at now, as they dropped their nets and, and followed Jesus, right? They left the nets behind. That was all they knew. They didn't carry the nets with them, dragging them uh, along the way, following Jesus. That would have been kind of weird, wouldn't it? Imagine watching these three or four guys dragging empty nets with them. The disciples said, and this is no longer where I identify. Would they still be known as fishermen? Sure. Absolutely. We read that over and over, don't we? I mean, even after Jesus' death, they went back to being fishermen for a while. Like, they didn't totally lose it, but in order to follow Jesus, they had to leave their net, their livelihood, their comfort. They had to leave the dirty, gross things behind. Friends, I wonder, what are we holding on to? And as disciples, are we holding on to things that are keeping us from truly following Jesus? So often we make excuses about, well, I can't do this and do that because my personality is such like that. just had a conversation about myself with, with someone regarding that. Oh, it's hard for me to sit still and be silent in solitude and, and, and go through all those things and just kind of leave that aside so I can sit and be with Jesus and be in his presence where I'm all the time, but to hear his heartbeat, to he, so he can hear my heartbeat, so I can hear myself breathe and recognize that I am human and, and, and that I, I just I want to be a better follower, disciple. We make excuses. Friends, I, I need to let go of that. My personality should not get in the way. My bike should not get in the way. Th those things that we hold dear to, our phones, they shouldn't get in the way of us following Jesus. And yet I think we allow so much on the outside to infiltrate that and that now to try to get rid of his heart. So we ask the question again, what's the first thing that comes to mind? What do you need to let go of? What are you holding on to really tight? Is there a relationship, a broken relationship that you're holding on to and letting it fester inside of you? Is there is an occupation that you're dealing with right now that you're just holding on to? Is your whole your identity that God calls you to be on that? I'm not saying that you leave the occupation, but that that's not the source of your identity. Your identity is following Jesus. And so, in the midst of this, we need to recognize God's presence with us. That the Holy One has come to be with us. It's interesting. Peter said, leave me, Lord, for I'm a sinner. And then they actually left everything. I, I wonder if we need to leave some things behind. Maybe our ego. What are the things that you identify with? They're not bad things. There was a point in my life where um, 
sports and they still are a big part of me just not playing as much um but in, in college and uh, high school that sports and activities were just such a big part of of my life and i noticed it was transforming who i was it, not in a good sense in a bad sense uh, and it got to the point where i just kind of do i need to let go of this and it really felt like god speaking to me saying nay this is taking over your life it's consuming everything I want you to follow me and leave those things behind. What? Sports? Soccer? Playing college soccer? I gotta leave it behind? It's amazing what happens when you leave things behind. And there are opportunities that God will pick them back up for you and that you can use them for His glory. But we need willing to let go. There's another passage of scripture that I heard this week, and uh, we all remember the the lady um, uh, who had the bleeding for 12 years, and no, no doctor could help her, and just horrible bleed, right? And all she wanted to do was get close to Jesus just to touch him. In order for her to touch Jesus, she had to let go of all the stigma about her unclean uncleanliness. About people saying, no, you can't do that. She had to get let go of all that in order to reach out. And when she was able to let go of those things and reach out, Jesus felt her touch. Friends, I wonder if the things that we're holding on to are keeping us from understanding and following Jesus fully. That we're holding on to those things. And letting those things dictate what's going on in life. Here's something I'm letting go. Of, or try, right? It's hard. I get it. It's, it's, it's a journey as well. But I'm trying to let go of hurry. I know that sounds really weird, right? Yeah. But just trying to slow down and to see God in the midst of all the things around me and to hear Him. Well, the disciples, now they left their nets and they followed Jesus, embarking on this journey that they have no idea what's going to take place. Friends, let's let go and let's follow Jesus no matter where He leads knowing that we can trust Him in all of life's circumstances. And He is with us. Thanks be to God. We must pray. God of mercy and grace, once again, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for these words that we have heard today. Father, I truly believe that there is something here for all of us. Something different. You're asking to call us all to respond in a little bit different way. But Lord, to be true followers of Jesus. We need to give of ourselves. And leave those things behind. Even after being a follower of Jesus for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 50 years, whatever it's been. Oh Lord, we're holding on to things that we are not being developed and formed to as spirit-led Christ-like disciples and to be Christ-like we were following Jesus to be more like him so have your way in our hearts and our minds no matter what we face may we know that you are with us speak words of life we pray in Jesus name amen well, we receive these words uh, for benediction. Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to the good news that I preach to you, which you also received and in which you stand. You are being saved through it. 
you hold on to the message I preached to you, unless somehow you believed it for nothing. I passed on to you as most important what I also received. Christ died for our sins. In line with the scriptures, he was buried. And he rose on the third day in line with the scripture. He appeared to Cephas and then to the twelfth. And then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at once. Most of them are, are still alive to this day. Though some have died, and then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me, as if I were born at the wrong time. I'm the least important of the apostles. I don't deserve to be called an apostle, because I harass God's church. I am what I am by God's grace, and God's grace hasn't been for nothing. In fact, I've worked harder than all the others. That is, it wasn't me, but the grace of God that is within me. So then, whether you heard the message from me or them, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are the body of Christ. Go. It is grace. It is peace.